I think that the uh, Ukrainians are going to are going to spend the next several months doing doing four things. Number one, they're going to try and keep the pressure on Russia's uh, energy infrastructure. So we're going to keep seeing these uh, strikes happening. We're going to keep seeing uh, strikes against Russian ships in the Black Sea. I mean, this is an area where they can keep making progress. And frankly, Crimea is the most important place. That's the decisive terrain of this war. So I think we'll, we'll keep seeing different strikes against Crimea, airfields, seaport, headquarters, logistics, that sort of thing, as they continue to get better and better with their own long-range drones. And now, finally, there is something called the ground launch small diameter bomb, which is about a 90-mile range precision weapon that finally has just arrived. We may start seeing some of, some of that. None of those are going to win the war, but anything that uh, reduces Russian headquarters, artillery, and logistics, and makes Crimea untenable, that's a good thing. So overnight, uh, we think at about 3 a.m. local time, there were two explosions which have rocked the Kerch Bridge, uh, which is uh, the bridge linking mainland Russia to the occupied Crimean Peninsula across uh, the Kerch Strait, uh, which links the Black Sea to the Sea of Azov. So it's an absolutely uh, vital strategic road link for Russia between mainland Russia and its occupied Crimean territory. And of course, it's a road and a rail bridge uh, allowing them to bring in uh, both tourists for Crimea for the summer tourism season, but also more importantly, in terms of the conflict in Ukraine, military supplies and materiel to keep their forces, uh, particularly on the southern front, uh, armed and equipped. Now, this is the second time that this bridge has been attacked in the course of the of the war since Vladimir Putin invaded in February 2022. The last time was in October when there was a massive explosion, what appeared to be possibly uh, a truck bomb, although the exact cause has never been uh, fully ascertained. In October, that blast uh, damaged part of the road carriageway and it also uh, set a train on the adjacent railway line on fire. Uh, and it was some four months, I think, until the bridge was fully operational again, although the Russians did manage uh, to get it open in some form pretty quickly. This attack seems different. Now, the reports so far that it may have been uh, conducted by maritime marine drones, that some sort of autonomous explosive device was steered into position under the bridge and has exploded from underneath, damaging both sections in both directions uh, of the road bridge. Now, it's a four-lane bridge, uh, two lanes in each direction, which are uh, sort of separate carriageways, but supported on the same uh, substructure. Uh, footage from the scene does appear to suggest that there's been an explosion from underneath, because looking at the footage, you can see that there is, there's damage to the structure below the road. Vladimir Putin himself opened the bridge uh, and it was built at huge expense, essentially to cement his claim to Crimea. Now, I'm sure our readers and viewers will remember that in 2014, uh, Russia effectively annexed Crimea, um, that their little green men, as they were called, uh, went in, um, staged a kind of what, what they wanted to look like a spontaneous uprising, but, but as we know, was clearly uh, orchestrated by the Kremlin in Moscow. Uh, and then they held the sham referenda uh, to cement their control, to basically say that, to, that Crimea was now part of Russia. Now, once that process had happened, Vladimir Putin ordered the construction of this uh, enormous bridge, uh, a sort of engine, a significant feat of engineering. Uh, and which he opened amid great fanfare. And it's symbolic because it, as I said, it links mainland Russia to occupied Crimea. It's effectively a way of tethering one territory to another. And therefore any attempt to sever that tether is, is symbolic as well as having strategic effects. It's symbolically cutting that tie to Russia. Uh, and of course, it's a huge morale boost for the Ukrainians because Throughout this war, what we've seen is Ukraine's armed forces focus their efforts on cutting and crippling Russia's supply lines to make it harder, if not impossible, for Russia to supply its forces on the front with food, men, and crucially, with ammunition. Now, what we saw last year was that after an attritional summer where both sides were slogging it out with heavy artillery barrages, Ukraine managed to choke the supply lines particularly in southern Ukraine, particularly to Russian forces who are occupying 
uh, Kherson city and the, the surrounding countryside. There came a point when the Russian commanders realized they could no longer hold that territory because they could no longer supply their forces. Now, what we're seeing again here is a similar attempt to choke Russian supply lines. We know that one of the key objectives of Ukraine's counteroffensive, which is currently ongoing, is to try and push its forces southwards uh, so that they can get within artillery and rocket range of the Sea of Azov. Now that's, it's often referred to as a land bridge. There is a strip of land that links mainland Russia to Crimea across the top of the Sea of Azov. And there are roads in that territory, but particularly one or two main roads, which Russia is using uh, to also to supply its troops. And if Ukraine could get within artillery range of those roads, they can effectively cut that supply line. But in order for, to, for, in order for any cut of supply lines to be effective, you have to cut all of them or as many of them as you can at the same time. Here we've seen the Kerch Bridge, uh, the suspension bridge to Crimea being cut. Uh, we know that Ukraine's forces are also trying to cut the routes across land across the Sea of Azov. If they can achieve both of those objectives, then Crimea itself will be, become incredibly vulnerable. It's also true that the U.S. administration has been fearful of a Ukrainian gain in Crimea because, quote unquote, that could provoke nuclear escalation or escalation involving other forms of WMD, weapons of mass destruction, by Russia. They've been intimidated by the Kremlin, which, again, is deeply unfortunate. I think you can inform your readers that you know this is actually the 10th anniversary of the war, not the second anniversary. It, it started in 2014 when Russia uh, invaded and illegally annexed Crimea and openly supported so-called separatists in Donetsk and Luhansk. And of course, these are not separatists. That's a joke. But I mean, this was that was the facade that they used. And so beginning in 2014, uh, they have been trying to uh, defeat Ukrainian forces, expand their control. The large scale military operation, the or large scale invasion did start two years ago, February uh, of 22. But if you think about it, Russia in 10 years with every advantage, numbers, modern equipment, um, industry, uh, all of those things, after 10 years, they still only control about 18% of Ukraine. 